Superman can fly, dodge bullets, do everything else. You know, Spider-Man shoots little webs. What is your superpower? Drawing the parallel between a business and their message and the people and the consumer so that you can go viral with the everyday person. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of ClickFunnels Radio. And we are going to dive into this. I'm excited everyone's here if you're listening or watching, but this could be an area within your personal brand or your business that you're probably neglecting if you might be in the ClickFunnels community because frankly, it's really not a topic we've touched base on much until today and probably in the near future. So definitely stay tuned to see uh, what we do in this regard. But Chris, before we just hit record, you and I were pretty much just firing off questions. We had to stop ourselves, like save it for yeah. the pod because frankly, we don't know a whole lot. This might be just a, just a class, an education session for you and I. Yeah, this is this is exciting. One of the things we're going to talk about here is is Twitter and X, and we've got uh, Marcos Ruiz with us, and this guy runs an agency. Yeah, sound effects with the clapping. Applause, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, and and I want to just dive into this. Marcos, welcome out, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Super excited. I love doing these because nobody's really talking about Twitter and X. Actually, I, I, it's frustrating because I listen to a lot of big marketing podcasts, and no one's ever mentioning you know, Twitter X as much as they should be. It's always like the LinkedIn or it's, yeah. you know, whatever's new on the block they're mentioning, but no one's talking about X. I'm like, we're the, you know, one of the fastest growing platforms in the world. So maybe it's on purpose and we'll get into that. You now <laughs> it's officially, it's officially called X, right? It's officially called X, but in the marketing, it's hard to get SEO with X. So I'm going to continue to say oh. Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's something Elon didn't even think about, huh? Mm. Yeah, I just had this problem the other day. I, I was, you know, I used the actual, there's an X logo symbol that you can use on, it's a keyboard shortcut. And but when you use that, nobody get, you don't get any SEO on it because it's, it's a symbol. Uh -huh. It's going to come up as a character. And if you just use the letter X, you know, you're not getting anything. It's so, like Prince. You can yeah. find Prince, but you couldn't find the symbol for Prince. Right. It's going to be decades <laughs> before you get SEO with just an X, the letter X. Uh, wow. so. so your company's called The Birdhouse. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Yeah, totally. So uh, we're a social media marketing agency, but specifically uh, on Twitter X. When we started, it was Twitter. This was pre-acquisition. Um, so obviously the birdhouse was kind of to say- Makes sense. We, we, actually, we were actually originally foundertweets.com. Not a lot of people know that. Um, and then we switched it over to the birdhouse. I, I kind of wanted to do more of a branding play. You know, four months later, they changed it to X. Five months later, they Perfect. changed it to X. And everyone's like, you're going to change it to the X house? I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. Makes, like, it no. makes us look OG. Yeah, we look OG yeah. now. You know, we could be around for 20 We've years. We've been around now. since the tweet. <laughs> right. Yeah. We've been around since 2006, I swear. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we do uh, social media ghostwriting. We write company and personal brand tweets. Uh, we help people go viral, help people market, do a little bit of ads. Um, so anything X Twitter marketing, that's our deal. We also do a little bit of LinkedIn and threads on the side, but you know, that's, gotcha. that's a little bit more boring. Well, <laughs> give us a little bit of your backstory. Like how did you get into this and say, okay, I, this is what I want to do. And then we can get into the platform a whole lot more. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a kind of an entrepreneur, you know, just kind of trying to make it my whole life. I never had a corporate job um, since I was 18. I joined actually joined the Army National Guard for six years and kind of did that on and off to sustain life uh, while I kind of just jumped around all of the different internet marketing hustles there were. I read Dot Com Secrets eight, seven nice. years ago. Uh, yes, never, I, I never, it didn't click until, you know, six years down the line, but it was one of it's my still first so ever relevant. That's what's so awesome about it. Anyways. Right. Yeah. It was one of my first ever books, expert secrets as well. Um, when I started building my personal brand, uh, but I actually had Twitter since 2011, seventh grade. So it was, it was really the place for all of my high school friends and middle school friends to just kind of like talk crap um, and just, you know, talk about what's going on in school. So I've had Twitter since 2011, you know, as high school went on, I kind of used it more for sports, uh, sports news, sports tweeting, you know, I'm an Arsenal fan. So I would tweet about Arsenal, the Celtics, New England sports, all that stuff. Uh, and then that evolved into, you know, crypto and like all these other, once I started getting into, you know, entrepreneurship and the internet, that's where, you know, uh, Twitter kind of blew up in the money space. And then, uh, you know, once that crypto market kind of died down, I'm like, all right, I should really learn something about business. So I actually was doing freelance copywriting on Upwork uh, for probably like four or five months doing, you know, 10 bucks a blog. Uh, and then I just discovered Twitter at the time. It was called Twitter ghostwriting, helping people write their tweets, gain followers. Um, so, you know, I undertook that and quickly realized that I had a knack for it because, you know, I had already been on Twitter for 
11 years prior, which is, you know, kind of my leg up on others is that I was already using this platform as a degenerate consumer. So yeah. I'm like, all right, now let me, let me put this, <laughs> let me use this power for good. Um, you know, I kind of went all in on that. As I said, foundertweets.com was my OG and I switched it up to the birdhouse and now it's been a few years since, and that's the history. Wow. And so you take on clients, you help them do all this stuff. I want to ask, and then we're going to get to the platform. Is there, what is like the most unique, like weird account that you've helped? Like something would be like, what? Somebody does that? Like, you know, yeah, I don't know. Underwater, you know. Yeah. Basketball. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. I mean, you know, it's funny. You wouldn't think this, but some of the most popular accounts we work with are more in like the small business space, uh, like pressure washing and okay. stuff like that, it, which is really interesting because you would think that the localization of a business like that makes it less viral. It's actually more viral because it's just it resonates with people as something that's more real, kind of the antithesis of like an e-commerce or like an AI or something like that. It's just mm -hmm. something nice and boring. So that boring business, small business kind of account is actually some of our most successful accounts, which caught me off guard. I had no idea that would be, that was actually our breakthrough. One of our first accounts was in that space. Um, so that's been one of our core niches uh, since. Very cool. Um, let me ask, you mentioned, you know, a uh, huge USP of, you know, your brand is one, you help brands on Twitter become recognizable and go viral. The word viral, does anything come to mind for you as one specific campaign or tweet that really popped off the first one and you're like dang we did it yeah you know it's interesting back when we first started the kinds of content we were putting out was much different um the first time we really went viral uh leave the thread was like it, it, this is really it, you know it, for the micro niche of audience that might be listening they'll know what i'm talking about but it was actually like self-help uh hacks so like the Feynman technique, uh, the Pareto principle, we would write threads like this is how you get 99% of your work done in four hours or less. The Pareto principle, the Feynman technique, these like life hack uh, productivity tips. And we would turn those into threads and you could basically copy paste those into anybody's account and blow them up. Um hmm. And it, that that has since kind of died out. You can't really do that anymore. But that's how a lot of these big influencers that you see kind of got their start was writing these like productivity hacks, super, super, they call them platitude threads. Um, but that's where it kind of like I, we got our start. That was like the first viral campaign. Uh, and some of our clients were just, you know, getting just an incredible amount of sales off of these generic platitudes, which made no sense to me back then. But now it's, you know, there's a method to the madness. I'm that's curious. Cool. Why though X over any other social media? Why is that what you leaned into? I know you have some experience there, but mm -hmm. why not uh, anything that's meta or yeah. you know, others? Well, you know, the truth is I had a couple of older agencies when I was younger in my teen years, early 20s. And one of them was like Amazon ads, pay-per-click. Um, I had a LinkedIn agency and I was just really bored. It was so boring, like... LinkedIn content, especially, you know, 2021 is like, it was, I don't know if you've ever seen LinkedIn <laughs> in 2021, man, put you to sleep. Um, mm. And then, you know, Amazon pay-per-click. I'm like, I'm looking at a dashboard. I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> I would have got mm. a, just a regular job <laughs> if I wanted to do this. <laughs> um, so I scrapped those. And um, once I, you know, once I started doing the Twitter stuff, I was like, okay, this is fun. I was already writing tweets that were going viral for fun. Uh, you know, on Arsenal and, and sports, uh, Twitter and stuff like that. And I was already using the app like eight hours a day. I was basically addicted, um, you know, when I was just a, a kid trying to make it. So I was like, all right, let me, if I just use the time that I'm spending on this platform for money, then, you know, it's going to click. So that was kind of the reasoning for Twitter. It wasn't that I, it, it, admittedly, it wasn't because, oh, I have the vision. I could tell this is going to blow up. It was more that I don't see a lot of people doing this. And I love this app personally. I kind of got lucky that Elon went and acquired it and brought all the publicity to it because that kind of, that was the reason we took off. Mm. Yeah, I mean, go ahead, Ben. I was say let's dive into that. Yeah, did you have a specific question around the acquisition? Well, I just, yeah, I was wondering yeah. like, <clears throat> what's different now, like with Elon? I mean, for, for me, I think I deleted Twitter probably ten years ago. I don't even know what it was, but it's eight or nine years ago. I was just like, okay, I'm done with this. And I don't know if it was censorship or whatever. It seemed like they only let certain people talk about what aligned with them. And 
Maybe Elon does a little bit of that too. I don't know. But what is so new and exciting about this since Elon took over and why should everybody be buying in? So I think, you know, from my business perspective, I think the thing that the Elon Musk acquisition did for us, uh, it just brought a lot of people's interest to the platform. It brought more people to the platform just naturally. He already has, he has the biggest personal brand in the entire planet. Um, so him just acquiring it brought way more people to the platform. For example, Tucker Carlson producing native Tuck Tucker yeah, Carlson true. on X. Um, a lot of didn't he just figures. pass Rogan by the way, like as like the biggest podcast period. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I heard and what it did, like last week, what mm -hmm. that's crazy. And what it did too is you see now a lot of. The, I mean, they really pushed video. Video has really it's grown forty five percent in video views uh, since the Twitter acquisitions from Twitter to X. Um, and you're seeing a lot of the biggest creators in the world post natively now. Um, for example, Lex Friedman posts all his podcasts native to X, full length with timestamps. Uh, he just posted an eight and a half hour podcast with Elon Musk and the Neuralink team. Tucker Carlson. We should do that. Right. Yeah. You should. I, I would give that. I always give that advice when I come on these is uh, post native with timestamps. Um, Tucker Carlson exclusively on X. Um, I even saw, I think it was Apple TV post their entire, an entire pilot episode of a TV show in full on X. Here, watch the first episode for free on X. If you like it, you know, come and come and get the subscription. So what it's done is, you know, it brought more players to the field. At the same time, it's also brought a lot of combatants trying to take it down. I mean, if you've seen the publicity, all the news says X is dying, X is dying. And then all the data says X is growing, X is growing. So if anything, it's just it's just brought a lot of good natural chaos. So I man, know. that chaos is crazy, though, because I feel like I can't even tell what's true anymore. Right. You know, because then they have that data like, oh, Twitter's dying, X is dying. But then you look at the data and it shows otherwise. Like when you go through this, how do you know what to believe, right? You do mm -hmm. your research and you make the best decisions you can. But I just, it's getting harder and harder, it feels like. Yeah. And I just, I tell people to just come experience it for yourself. Um, you know, again, the data's there, you know, the anecdotal experience is there from our clients. They're growing, you know, over and over and over, going more and more and more viral, um, more and more and more sales. I'd say, you know, there is a long way to go before the platform is mature from a business perspective, like an Instagram or a Facebook. I mean, it's one fifth the size of Instagram, 2.5 billion versus, you know, 550 million. Um, but that just means that there's a huge opportunity there. Um, like, like Gary Vee says, right. It's uh, day trading attention. Hmm. 100%. Um, Gosh, I'm even trying to think of where where to go from here because I want to dive into that, but also maybe some advice for the audience too. I want to um, ask something quick while you're thinking, Marcos. Yeah. I don't usually ask these type of things. These are usually kind of like Ben Ben questions. All right, so Superman can fly, dodge bullets, do everything else. You know, Spider Man shoots little webs. What is your superpower? Like, is it something specifically on X or is exit period? Like, what is your superpower? No, I, th I don't think our superpower is the X side of it. I think our superpower, my superpower, um, is kind of drawing the parallel between a business and their message and the people and the consumer so that you can go viral with the everyday person. Because I think the mistake a lot of things, a lot of people make is they have their message and they have what they want to say. And they just put that on a platform and they hope instead of maybe what people want to hear. Right. And you have to have that balance and you have to find parallels uh, that actually are going to resonate with a large TAM, like a large total addressable market so that you can acquire virality. You can't go virality in these micro niches. You can't get virality in these micro niches unless you're able to draw a parallel to a big enough audience. So like, mm -hmm. for example, with click funnels, you know, if you want to talk about building a funnel uh, and you're saying, you know, you can increase your SEO or your conversion rate by this much percentage, you're going to get diddly squat, right? But if you can say how the everyday person can promote their business or make this much money, right? Now it's going to start appealing to a bigger and bigger market. And you use that as top of funnel. And then you do other kinds of posts to nurture them. And the superpower of X is that you can post so many times in a day without any penalty. So you're able to do those top of funnel posts and the nurture in the same day. Uh, and that's really like, that's the superpower of us, but also the superpower of X. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah right. Um, a couple of questions. Then at some point, Chris, we, we got, I want to segue into, uh, what people can do to get started, right? Some of the yeah, listeners of that, uh, would, would love to, to be and have a presence on Twitter, whether for the personal brand or the actual company, but, uh, you know, there's been a lot of buzz, right? The last two and a half years, let's just say on this platform, where do you see it in five years? 
I think in five years, I see it as a definite billion active users. Um, I see it in that. It's not really even top five. I'd say it's going to be in that top five social media platforms, a billion active users. Um, I think they'll bring back Vine and really take part in that short form video area just because every platform is. I know LinkedIn's testing it out. Uh, you know, Twitter's already testing it out, but they're going to bring back Vine oh, in my opinion. People, people's attention. Yeah. 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 And they're like, oh, I get this dopamine hit from a three second clip. It's crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So I think they'll bring back Vine. I think they'll be a top five social media platform with a billion active users. And I think a lot, if not all of the major businesses, I think the dust will settle on all of these lawsuits and advertising issues. I think they'll fix up their ads platform. And I think all the biggest businesses in the world will be advertising on X, uh, you know, at least a little bit. Um, so that's why I see it in five years. And as that global town square, it's it's already the center for politics and news, but it'll continue to be the center for politics and news. Yeah. I Do totally you think that, that that almost replaces like, the CNNs or the CNBCs, I'm not probably in five years, but do you think that that's an eventual type thing? I think so. Um, and I'm just, this is purely anecdotal, but like my parents don't even have cable anymore. Um, and XTV, right. then the XTV app is being tested. So, you know, once XTV comes and it's already the center for information, I think it's going to be kind of that like interesting middle ground of like Facebook in a sense that the older generation is going to use it for news. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just going to replace. I think the the quote unquote mainstream media uh, is dying. Just I think it's just a it's just a rotation. It's just evolving. Um, I don't think there's a yeah. need for these big super big news outlets. So yeah, I agree if anything, you. those news outlets will evolve into social media. They'll have to. <laughs> yeah, they'll have to yeah. adapt. Right? right. I mean, guys, a few weeks ago, whenever it happened, I don't remember. Joe Biden dropped out of the presidential race, and the White House the White House staff found out from a tweet. Like they literally announced it on Twitter before it was announced internally in the White House, which is wild. And then you look at, you know, and, and uh, Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson went live. Over seven hundred thousand people watching live on That's Twitter. Um, you know, and as we speak now, I think Donald Trump and Elon are fixing to go live on Monday next week. Uh, this is August eighth of the recording, so we'll see what happens there. Who knows? But, um, Marcos. You spend a lot of time on this platform, student of the game. You have to build your Mount Rushmore of favorite Twitter accounts of all time, brands or people. <laughs> Who are you picking? That is a loaded, loaded question. Let me <laughs> let me give it. Wendy's, some Chipotle. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah right. the floor's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that is a crazy question. Um, I'm gonna go right off the bat. It has, you know, I'm gonna start with with Elon. He deserves the shout out. Uh, right. I have his notifications on. I love his stuff and I love how he has no filter. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, you know, I really like Mario Nafal. Uh, he's just kind of like the main guy for like news spaces. It, it's not his account. as It's not him as a person. It's his account as an aggregate. He's the guy who's hosting these spaces that has like Elon Musk talking to like you know, politicians and Vivek talking to like the most random, like, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. It's insane. I love that account. Um, it, if you, if you are new to Twitter, you have to follow that account just for those spaces with like hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so those are going to be the big two right off the bat. This is going to be a complete curveball. Um, I don't even know if they're still doing it, but opera GX is like a browser but they run their company page. It, it's one of those funny company pages that just tweets like they're like a little kid and they're just like always joking around. I'm going to go with Opera GX because they're off the top okay. of my head. They're, they're so funny. Uh, it, it's funny seeing a company page make jokes because it's like, isn't that a company? <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm trying to sign it into Twitter now. I somehow got signed out. Yeah, oh, I had to clear is... my cash yesterday. I'll do it. As we're live, I got to resurrect you're... mine now, man. Like this is this is the the new cool. I thought no, LinkedIn it... was the new cool, but I I'm like a year behind. You I'll do go... stuff with LinkedIn though too, don't you? Yeah, we one more though. Uh, Greg, yeah. it's like Greg one C has like a bunch of numbers one six six seven. He is the funniest. Who you're you know who I'm talking about? He's <laughs> under every big like big celebrity and entrepreneur and politicians thing, and he just makes the most oblivious jokes. That just don't even make sense. They're so funny. They're so harmless, and they're it's real comedy. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Greg's gonna be my last one. It is so entertaining. Uh, yeah, it, it's like a picture of like a funny looking or if, whoever the real person. It is. might be him. So yeah. It's like funny. <laughs> yeah, it could be him. Yeah, funny looking dude. Uh, maybe like making a quirky face or something like that. From what I remember. 
Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Chris, you have any ex questions right now or can well, I, you know, I was in? also curious too. You mentioned like, even you said like, okay, LinkedIn 2021. And I feel right. like there's been a resurgence there with obviously X, but just for just a quick minute, maybe we can kind of compartmentalize this. Yeah. Talk to us about LinkedIn, man. Like, are there effective ways to use that in maybe in conjunction with X? Yeah, I think LinkedIn is really, really powerful right now. I wanted to neglect it about a year ago before we added it to our service stack. I added it in 2024 in January, so at the beginning of this year. Um, and it's been, I, I compare it like this. I This is how I explain it to clients and how I explain it in my content. X is where you're going to get that meteoric viral growth, um, almost like the Wild West. And LinkedIn is where you're going to get that really predictable, solid, consistent growth. Um, and it's a lot less work to get some very consistent, predictable results. For example, you know, if I have an account with 100K on Twitter and 10K on LinkedIn, like they're going to gain 500 to 1,000 followers on LinkedIn every single month on autopilot with like five posts a week. Uh, whereas on on Twitter, it could be a thousand and it could be a hundred thousand. <laughs> like there's, it's just, there's absolute chaos on the X side in the best way possible, but two completely different places. Um, LinkedIn has been a, gr a bigger and bigger growth for our clients in terms of brand and sales, uh, in terms of performance. We're seeing some like minor virality now. They're doing again, the video testing, the short form video page, it's in beta. So hmm. um, I can see everyone kind of taking a page out of the X playbook now. Um with more resources so they're able to kind of execute you, faster so it's really interesting do you post very different on those platforms so it depends on the person the no it's definitely not the same stuff um so like for me on my i use a tool called uh like hype fury and i'm able to post like manage all my posts there and there's a little button that um you can essentially change the context of the of the post if you know for linkedin so for example um i won't post any of my super uh, personal or casual tweets on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll keep it pretty professional. Um, and in addition, I also will change up the context of my, of my post. So it's never direct. So for example, um, on X, I might say, if you want to grow, you can on this platform, you can do this. Whereas on LinkedIn, it'd be, if you want to grow on Twitter, do this. So it's kind of like, I always change the context, but I definitely keep it more professional. Most of our clients are going to have much more professional content on LinkedIn. Uh, versus Twitter might be a bit more casual, a bit more loose. Um, and I think that's just the nature of the person consuming it. You know, the average person scrolling LinkedIn is probably sitting either at their job or looking for a job or like the context of why they open that app's different. Yeah, it seems like it seems like it's just, you know, for uh, account development reps, like they just want to go through and find the titles and just cold DM people. Like that's what's kind of feel like a little bit of the turnoff on LinkedIn for me. Um, how would somebody use that though in a, in a really good way that isn't, you know, they're either looking for a job, but they're looking to hire somebody or they're trying to make sales. Right. And I'm starting to see more and more people consume as just a consumer on that platform. But I think the caveat is that the person that's consuming is also maybe open to looking for a job, hiring, make sales. I think LinkedIn themselves are making the transition to trying to be a content based platform hence the the video stuff. Um, but I think that is their uphill battle is the sales stuff. You know, you log into link, LinkedIn, you're going to get, you know, a bunch of connection requests and in-mail yeah, sales, yeah. and you have to like go through all those notifications. It's, it's hard. I, I don't, I'm interested to see what they do, but they are pushing to be a content first platform. They're even giving creators, um, you know, these top entrepreneur voice, top branding voice badges under their thing. You could change your profile to a creator profile. So they're very obviously pushing for creators to create there. Um, but it, you know, changing the context in which people open the app is going to take time. So if you had to, if somebody's just getting started, let's say that they're on, you know, Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're doing all this stuff. What would you suggest that they do? Maybe let's, let's go back to Twitter. Like how would they start? Maybe they don't have an account or maybe they haven't done anything. What's the best way for them to start getting more followers, get some virality? What 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 are the things that worked for you? What would you suggest? Right. So if you're you know you're going in it solo dolo, um, you know you need to start the account, set up the profile. Um, I always say like who you are, what you've done, what you've accomplished. Your bio should handle that. Nice picture, uh, etc. Get your profile set up and then immediately start networking with people um, in your niche. Follow them, reply to their tweets. You know, DM a couple of them. Um, I highly recommend jumping on some spaces. That's how you're really going to get those first few hundred followers. Then from there, the content becomes more of an important factor. 
uh, because then you'll have actual followers who are going to care about what you post. Uh, and, you know, by the nature of the algorithm, it's not at a healthy spot like TikTok where you can come in with zero followers, post and get traction. Um, you know, maybe you'd have to get very lucky. It's possible, but it's it's not something I'd rely on as from a business perspective who's investing resources. Um, so that's your playbook for the first few hundred. Then you can start posting content in conjunction with that. And that's how you're going to slowly get engagement and traction um, and start to get virality. So we, we, we talked a little bit about the difference between LinkedIn and Twitter, but is there different content that goes from Facebook and Instagram than what, how you'd post on Twitter? And then Ben, I know you had a question too. So jump in there. Right. So Instagram, uh, you know, when you're doing those short form videos, there's some differences and some similarities. If you're going to be doing, you know, talking head videos or something like that, that will fit on on Twitter and LinkedIn. Both platforms have immersive swiping like TikTok. So you can just swipe to the next one. Um, but, you know, I know Instagram a lot of times have these loop videos uh, with text on screen. Those don't really perform on Twitter. Now I'm just getting super practical. That's like a small thing. Um, in terms of long form video, however, like YouTube, that can go directly on Twitter and it performs well. Um, the algorithm rewards time on platform, time on the post. So those longer form mm. videos do do really well. Um, and I know they're adding, they're looking at adding uh, a video tab and again, the XTV app. So I recommend repurposing any good talking head explainer, how to, or long form video on there. Um, and then in terms of like Facebook, the posts, you could put those directly on there for the most part. Um, if it's good content, it's ultimately good for Twitter. Yeah. Back to your, because you had a great answer to Chris's question around what can they do to start gaining traction on the Twitter platform. And let's drill in on a specific. And I, the first person that comes to my mind is our friend Joel, who we just interviewed before you and I, we, we the three of us hopped on here. And he's in the men's coaching space, uh, specifically um, targeting married men who are professionals that, you know, are how would you? How else would you phrase that, Chris? Trying to be better yeah, he's professionals, trying to, better uh, husbands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Husbands, fathers, yeah. Yeah, just men's coaching. So if he is starting on Twitter for the first time, you would suggest that maybe he targets uh, top people that his clients would be following, uh, set post notifications so that he's responding to tweets in a timely manner. Because essentially, like, if I'm following, I'm a huge football person, like Adam Schefter on Twitter or something like that, and I have post notifications set up and I respond quick to one of his tweets, I'm going to get a ton of impressions because I'm the first person that's like underneath his tweet, right? Would you suggest, is that what you mean by, um, yeah, I think I described that correctly. Yeah. That's like, that's, that's some good, that's like a funnel hacker mindset right there. That is absolutely <laughs> a great tip. I personally, yeah, we're getting, yeah. we're getting super practical. I'm even subscribed. I pay five bucks a month to subscribe to people like Mr. Beast and Elon Musk. So that if I do, I end up have his post notifications on. So sometimes when I'm just scrolling and I see, Oh, Elon Musk tweet, if there's something I can think of that's either clever or adds value, I'll, I'll tweet it right away. Cause I'm going straight to the top. One, if you're premium, uh, if you pay for like the verification, you're going already, you're getting reply priority too. If you're a subscriber to that person, you get a maximum reply priority. And yes, you're going to get a bunch of free impressions like that. I've had some Elon Musk replies that have gotten, you know, hundreds of likes and stuff like that. So uh, that is great. Um, I definitely recommend that for, yes, for like, for example, him, that it's a huge niche on X. So um, I can already think off the top of my head, guys like Savior Sons, um, who is one of the biggest uh, kind of men's coaching, father coaching. There's, I think they had a company called like Father Eyes. He has 500, 600,000 followers. Um, so that's a person he would, he should yeah. be engaging with, joining his spaces, replying to his stuff and publishing content in his niche so that when he gets that reply priority, um, you know, he gets 5,000, 6,000 views on his reply. People are clicking his uh, his profile. Maybe it's a one or uh, one or 5% conversion. You're getting 50 to 100 profile views on just that one reply. And now people are coming to your profile. If they see content, they see a good profile and you're putting out stuff they want, you're going to get some followers and it just keeps compounding that way. Same thing with spaces. You come onto these, for those who don't know, spaces, essentially clubhouse, uh, it's just talking to each other live. Um, so you join these live spaces, you get up on stage to talk and you start talking. And if you're saying good stuff, people are going to follow you. So uh, it's the same. Those are two, probably the two most effective and the two most no follower friendly growth hacks. Um, content, is retweeting is retweeting still a thing? Retweeting is re, it's reposting now. Let's not <laughs> get political. I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> the old guy in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an X suite. <laughs> yeah. 